Praise God. Thank you for being here. Matthew 28 tells the story. We can read it different places. We'll read it out of Matthew 28, uh, beginning in verse 1. In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulcher. And behold, there was a great earthquake, and the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. Verse 3 says, His countenance was like lightning, and his raiment white as snow. And for fear of him, the keepers did shake and became as dead men. They were just frozen. And the angel answered and said unto the women, Fear not, for I know that you seek Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen. And he said, Come and see the place where the Lord lay. And verse 7 says, And go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And behold, he goeth before you into Galilee, and there shall ye see him. Lo, I have told you. And they departed quickly from the sepulcher with fear and great joy, and did run to bring his disciples' word. And as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them, saying, All hail. And they came and held him by the feet and worshipped him. Then said Jesus unto them, Be not afraid, go tell my brethren that they go into Galilee, and there shall they see me. He was alive. He was alive from the dead. In a world full of fake news and, well, expert liars and uh, fabricators and uh, manipulators and where the truth is... uh, a rare commodity. Uh, I think we all want the truth. We really do. We want the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. And we've got it. And the truth is that the tomb is empty, and He is risen. That is the great truth of the Bible. Jesus Christ is alive. That is the truth, and that is no April Fool's. How many of you are glad He's alive today? We, we have come to celebrate. There's nothing, I'm not going to try to play any tricks with you today. There's one message, the tomb is empty, he's alive. That's the message today. It's really about coming together and celebrating it. I think it should be celebrated like nothing else. You know, uh, drivers, when they win a race, they take a victory lap. Well, I think the church ought to take a victory lap at least once a year. How many of you are glad he's alive from the dead? Last night, last night, way late, Gonzaga is playing UCLA, and it's it's a if you like basketball, it is a basketball game. It it, it really was an historic game, uh, the way it was played back and forth, and it went right down to the very end. And I, it looked like UCLA might just might had a chance, and then there was a call, and then the ball was inbounded, and uh, somebody can correct me. Somebody knows for sure. or something on the clock when it was inbounded to a freshman and he had a clear path and he went up the floor as fast as he could. I don't know if he took four dribbles. We'll have to look at it again and I'm sure you can look at it again. But he's just just beside, it looks like the center uh, final four emblem. Uh, 40 feet from the basket he goes up in the air and he shoots and the ball bounces off the backboard and right through the net. It's an amazing shot. A freshman just won the game of his life. Kept him undefeated to play for the final uh, Monday night. Uh, He said, all I could think about was jumping up on the scorer table like uh, D. Wade and others have done. And he took off and he jumped up on the scorer's table and he's celebrating Uh, as he stands up there, I thought, that's what the church ought to be doing today. That's what we ought to be doing today. We ought to be celebrating because what has happened is greater than any shot, winning shot made at the last second or the last buzzer beating shot in a basketball game. I was really hoping for some genuine enthusiasm today. Anybody excited or have any energy about the resurrection of Jesus Christ? Feel free to make some noise if you want to. Welcome to our resurrection party and celebration. Jesus is alive. 
And He conquered death, hell, and the grave. And it's the single greatest event in all of history. You know, the empty tomb of Jesus is the only tourist attraction where people line up to see nothing. How many, how many of you are glad there's nothing there? He's not, there's no body. There's a missing body in His tomb. Give Him praise today. Give Him honor. Give Him glory. Give Him the glory that's due His name. Our Redeemer lives and it's not a myth. It's not a legend. It's established truth and we hold on to that established truth. Just imagine the sense of awe and wonder and explosive excitement and energy on that first Easter morning. It was an event like no other. The tomb is empty and as someone said, we don't have to be. The tomb is empty and we don't have to be. An event absolutely essential to all that we believe. You subtract the resurrection from all that we believe and you get a big fat zero. There's nothing left that makes any sense. Nothing. We believe the doctrine of the resurrection of Jesus Christ is not a take it or leave it proposition. It's not a maybe I will or maybe I won't. No, the resurrection is at the core of all that we believe. It's a non-negotiable of our faith. Jesus is alive from the dead, period. This I believe with all my heart. The tomb is empty. And I don't have to be. And you don't have to be. The risen Christ fills our life. Jesus Christ is alive from the dead. And He's alive in us today. Some wanted Jesus dead. And they saw to it that it was carried out. He was executed. And He was taken from the cross. And He was buried. Some wanted Jesus dead, and, and He was. And some wanted Him alive, and He wasn't. And they were so disheartened. They were confused, and they were overwhelmed. I'll tell you something else. I think Satan thought it was over. And Jesus must have said, over my dead body. <laughs> Jesus was dead, sure enough, and He was buried. But wait, there's this amazing third day discovery. There was no body. When they looked in, there's no body, a missing body. What had happened? Well, the tomb had been made as secure as possible when you compare every uh, account of uh, Jesus' crucifixion and uh, death and burial. Uh, you understand that there was... Uh, a big rock, and there was a Roman seal, punishable by death who, but for anyone who tampered with it. And then there was a detachment of guards that were placed there to guard the tomb. So it was made as secure as possible, humanly possible. But he made it out alive. God had raised his son from the dead, and nothing could stop him. Nothing can stop Jesus. Nothing can hold him back. And the greatest words that anyone on the earth could hear came from an angel's voice. He is risen. He's alive. He's risen. The life of Jesus uh, is bracketed by two supernatural events. His virgin birth and His resurrection. He entered the human race supernaturally and He exited the grave supernaturally. The virgin's womb and the empty tomb Two supernatural events that bracket the life of Jesus. Acts 1.3 says, After His suffering, after His passion, after His suffering, He showed Himself to these men and women and gave many convincing proofs that He was alive. He presented Himself alive to many witnesses after His resurrection. In Revelation 1.18, He said, I am He that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore, and I have the keys of death and hell. The resurrection matters. It matters like nothing else. The resurrection is the cornerstone and the centerpiece of the gospel. If you eliminate it, then you eliminate the life-giving power of the gospel. If Jesus did not live past the grave, then those who trust Him cannot hope to do so either. Indeed, the gospel is meaningless, the apostle argues, and is worthless if Christ is not alive from the dead. What good is a dead Messiah? And the apostle Paul in the Corinthian letter argues from the standpoint, if there be no resurrection, we have no Savior. We have no forgiveness. 
We have no gospel. We have no hope. Our preaching is meaningless and filled with lies. And number six, our faith is worthless or useless or futile. And number seven, the believing dead have perished and we are yet in our sins. But it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, the resurrection chapter of your Bible, verse 20, the apostle said, but Christ has indeed been raised from the dead. He's alive from the dead. And it's the greatest story ever told about the greatest man who ever lived, contained in the greatest book ever written. Easter reminds me of at least three things. I learned them a long time ago. They've helped me throughout my, my life, my adult life especially. Number one, God intervenes in even the darkest of times. You're apt to have some dark times. But remember, God intervenes even in the darkest of times. The resurrection teaches us that. Especially in the darkest of times, God intervenes. Secondly, God does the impossible. What, what is, what is uh, seemingly impossible, oh, God, God does those things. He does impossible things. With God, there's, the Bible says nothing is impossible. So if hope is small and your situation seems irreversible, if you've been knocked down and knocked out and counted out, you need this information. Here it is. It's simple enough. You've heard me say it over and over. Jesus is alive. He's alive from the dead. Because death could not hold Him. God does the impossible. And thirdly, God has the last word. I always remind myself of that. God has the last word. He always has the final say. I believe in the sovereignty of God. In all things, over our nation, over our lives, over the church, I believe God has the final say. In a world that offers death after life, Jesus can now offer life after death. I'm up for that, aren't you? Life after death. The tomb was not the only thing opened but Jesus opens up new possibilities for all of us uh, through His resurrection. The resurrection life flowing through us opens up all kinds of possibilities for each of us. Empowering us to do what we otherwise could never do. God can do supernatural things through your life. And He wants to. The angel said, come and see. He said, come and see. We're not always in, invited to see the evidence. We're not always invited to, to investigate. But the angel said, hey, we got nothing to hide here. Come and see for yourself. And so I'd like for you, if you're a skeptic, I'm not mad at you. If you're a scorner, I, I, I may be a little aggravated at you, but I'm not, I'm not really. If you're a skeptic or a scorner, if you're a non-believer today, you owe yourself to come and see. You owe it to yourself to investigate a little bit. Conduct your own investigation. Don't trust mine. Do your own investigation. In Acts 1-3 it says he presented himself alive with many infallible proofs. Many infallible proofs. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15 1-9 through talking about the resurrection of Jesus Christ it says he appeared to over 500 people at one time how many want to have 500 eyewitnesses that you can parade on the stand? Give each of them 15 minutes. That means that you got four an hour. If you do eight hours in the courtroom, that gives you 32. You take 32 times 16, and you really just come up a little bit over 500, I think. So almost 16 days of testimony, one every 15 minutes could tell you, yeah, we saw him. He's alive. Yep, my, that's what I saw. My, my testimony is that he is alive. I saw him. I saw him with my own eyes. I think if you'll do uh, your investigation, you'll, you'll discover the evidence shows that he rose again. Uh, but you ought to be sure and search it out for yourself. I'm fully persuaded that he's very much alive. Not only because of the testimony of the Word of God, but also the difference that he's made in my life. Uh, Christ Jesus has transformed my life. Would you testify today that Jesus has changed your life? Wouldn't you testify today that His life in yours has made a difference? 
that He's very much alive even on the inside of you. And then the encouragement to go quickly and tell. Don't waste your opportunities to pass on the information. Jesus being alive is the greatest thing you can ever pass on. Isn't it amazing what goes viral? Isn't it amazing what people want to pass on to others? How about passing on to others the greatest news release of all time? Jesus Christ came out of the grave. It all starts with you passing that information on to a friend. What person can you talk to about Jesus being alive from the dead? You say, well, I'm not, I don't know. I don't have, really have the words. Well, you could invite them to church. You invite them to church, I'll tell them about Jesus. You bring somebody, we'll tell them about Jesus. What's the big deal about Easter? Well, it's the resurrection deal. Sometimes I'll just say happy resurrection day. It's the resurrection that really matters. Paul again argues in that 1 Corinthians uh, chapter uh, that uh, we're still in our sins and there's no salvation and, and we have deceived people and our message is false and it's all a hoax and it's all empty and a colossal waste of time if Jesus is not alive. But he says, but now is Christ risen from the dead and this is no fairy tale. As the Bible uses the term idle tale, that's what some of them thought when Jesus was reported to be alive. They thought, he, they thought the women had kind of lost it. And they thought it was an idle tale. It's no idle tale. It's no fairy tale. It's the truth. He's alive from the dead. It's the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Our message is true, and it is significant. He is alive, and it is a big deal. It's the biggest of deals. We make much out of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. In fact, we come every week to celebrate it. We come to celebrate the resurrection of our Lord on the first day of the week because that is the day He rose from the dead. Because He lives, I tell you, I could preach for a while longer and I think you've about had all you can take, but uh, we could never, it's not possible to exaggerate the importance of the resurrection. Throughout eternity, you're going to be glad for the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The resurrection, I believe, has a voice. And what the resurrection says is really important. Because the world is always trying to speak to us too and always try to say things to us. The world's going to say, you can't make it. You won't make it. But the resurrection has a voice. And the resurrection says, yes, you can. The world says you can't get back up. You can't get back. You've got to be kidding me. That's what the world says. You can't get back up. But the resurrection says, yes, you can. The world says you can never escape your addiction. Your, the, the meth, the alcoholism, the bondage, you, you're never going to break free from that. But guess what the resurrection says? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. The world says you'll never break your pattern and cycle of failure. Your, your dad was a failure. Your grandpa was a failure. It just runs down through the family lineage. You'll never break that cycle in your own life. You've been nothing but a failure. And the devil whispers to us and says, you're never going to escape being a failure. But the resurrection has a different voice, has a different word for you. And the word from the resurrection is, yes, you can break that cycle of failure. The world says, someone like you cannot be saved. Someone that's done the things that you've done can't be saved. The resurrection says, oh yes, you can. The world says you can't live forever, but the resurrection says, the resurrection voice says, yes, you can. The world says no, but the resurrection voice shouts yes. How many of you are up for some yeses in your life? The resurrection speaks truth. Jesus is alive and death is defeated. Now I'm coming in for a landing. I just want you to listen to me for just a couple more minutes. The resurrection, again, is the cornerstone and centerpiece of all that we do. There's nothing more important than, it, than the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Concerning our faith, it's the founding, it's the rock of our faith. It, it tells us that Jesus is greater than death. It tells us that you can't stop Jesus. Now, until you stare death in the face... Easter could be just another word for you. 
It's a nice day for bunny rabbits and colorful eggs. But when a loved one dies, and for me to uh, experience death up close and personal, uh, you have to go back to like 1977 and my granny died of cancer. And I was with, I was with my mom in the hospital when my granny died. And she was a really important person in my life, my mom's mom. She got cancer and she died. Somebody close to you dies. It makes an impact on your life. You just have to go forward about six years. And the worst thing that ever happened to me happened to me on May 21st. And the word was that my 4.37 in the morning phone call and my little brother was dead. I found a picture yesterday. I was eight. He must have been about six. I, it was before my eighth birthday. He must have been six. He kind of crowding up there next to my shoulder. Little boys. I loved him. He was my brother. He's 26 years old. I really didn't think I'd be able to take another breath. That's what I felt like when I... My dad didn't want to come out and tell me on the phone that he, he just told me to come to the house. And, and I said, I don't need to go to the hospital. No, just come to the house. And I said, is Doug gone? Is Doug dead? And he affirmed that he was. And I really did not think I could breathe again. You see, without this death thing, the resurrection doesn't mean anything, but death is a reality. And I have found it to be true that the resurrection is an anchor in the raging storm of heartbreak and loss. I needed the rock, and there is a rock to hide and find shelter. There's a rock on which to stand. There's a hope that raises you out of the dust of despair. There's a, there's a rock that steals and reinforces your soul when life is at its darkest moment and you think it'll never get better. The empty tomb shouts to us encouragement from the past and faith can rise up in our hearts and fears can be dismissed and there's victory for us even in this life and great hope is found in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. There's a better day coming for us who have experienced the death of our loved ones. Hope is alive. Jesus is alive. Hope is alive because He is alive. And God wants to resurrect hope in your life. They're, they tell me over the past year, a lot of people have they've become hopeless. I tell you what, being here Friday night and being here this morning instills a lot of hope within me. I wondered if the church, church could ever come back. And then I often told people, I believe God can bring back those He wants to bring back. I wondered, people asked me, said, do you think people come back? I said, I don't have any idea. But one thing I do know, God can bring people back that he wants to bring back. I'll tell you what, I'm glad you're back today. I am really glad you're back. It's a good day to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And if this, this was my last time to preach to you, if, if my life for some reason would be over today, I hope that you will remember that this preacher told you that Jesus Christ is alive from the dead. Let's give Him glory and praise today. He's alive. Let's stand together. He's alive. He's alive and I'm forgiven. Heaven's gates are open wide. He's alive. Father, I thank You for these people today. And Lord, if there's anyone here today that needs to put their faith and trust in Jesus Christ, I pray this day would be their day of salvation. I pray, Lord, if there's anyone that needs to call upon You, that they will do that in this moment. They will cry out to You, placing their trust and faith in You. Thank You, Lord, for all that You do for us. 
Thank you for life. Thank you for everlasting life. Thank you for the promise of heaven. We glorify your name, Lord. Just like the women who fell at your feet and worshipped, I pray that we'll all find that place at your feet today and worship you as our resurrected Lord and Savior. Amen. We're going to be singing, and if you need to make any kind of a public commitment, or if you want to come to Christ, we'll wait here for you. If you need somebody to pray for you, there will be people that would pray with you and pray for you. I'm not sure how much you want to move around, and you don't have to. You can call upon the name of the Lord right where you are.